everybody. This is Chad. What we're looking at here is Recordia, which are absolutely beautiful. And they're one of my favorites, but unfortunately, this video isn't about Recordia. Um, and it isn't about the shrimp that's about to enter the frame either, although he plays a part. It's actually about something ugly, um, something annoying, and that something is right there. It's called Aptasia, a glass anemone. It's a pest. It gets into your tank and it grows. How does it get in? Well, unless you put your corals in a quarantine tank and wait for the Aptasia to grow, it's just going to sneak in. Um, it can come in on a coral with it being so small, the Aptasia, that you can't even see it with a naked eye. Now you can dip your corals all you want, but the dips don't kill, kill Aptasia. The only things that they will kill um, are the little creepy crawly inverts and things like that. Uh, if you found a dip that killed Aptasia, well, it would also kill your coral. So that's not something you can do. And as you can see, I am quite infested uh, with the stuff. Um, so it's, it's pretty much made its home everywhere. Interesting thing I want to note here is while Aptasia is known and to be a stinger, and you'll see that all over the message boards, um, Zinnia, at least, doesn't care. Um, it grows right up next to it. The Recordia don't seem to care. The Green Star Polyps don't seem to care. Maxi Mini and Nimini don't seem to care. Um, and the Leathers don't seem to care. So yeah, they, they sting, but the corals that I have anyway don't seem to care a whole lot. Um, and then they seem to completely stay away from the bubble tip uh, anemone. This little guy is uh, just eaten, so he's kind of shriveled up. He's a fairly new addition, and hopefully he'll get bigger the more he consumes. It's pretty, and I'm hoping that he'll get really large. Anyway, so what we've got to figure out is how to get rid of uh, these Aptasia. And we're going to talk about four methods uh, to do it. One is peppermint shrimp, and that's where this guy will play a role. We'll talk about it then. The other is lemon juice. Um, you can also use a product called Aptasia X. And then the fourth and final method that we're going to talk about is kind of fun. I think you're all going to enjoy that. It's using a laser beam um, to burn them. Well, I have a high-powered blue laser, and we're going to scorch some of these suckers and um, see how that does as far as getting rid of them. That'll be in the uh, fourth and final video. So the next, the next video will be talking about peppermint shrimp. The video after that will be talking about the lemon juice, and then, then after that the aptasia, then finally the laser. Um, so it'll be a total of, of uh, five or six videos on, on aptasia. There's a few other method, methods that I'll briefly mention, but we're not going to show you how to get rid of them with those methods. Um, for me, it's because they're costly. Now you're probably thinking the laser is costly. Yeah, laser is costly. I, I admit that I did that mostly just to see, just so that I could own a laser. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to own a laser, right? So, the main main methods, that's what we'll do. Anyway, so so stay tuned. Uh, we'll, we'll start the other videos really soon. And the reason I'm doing separate videos is, is so we can take time to actually demonstrate. Because I don't want to just tell you about it, I want to actually show you. I'm going to do each of the methods. So since we have an infestation, it gives me an opportunity to, to actually show you. Now the nice thing is, I want to point out, I'll be able to get rid of these. So I'm not, you know, yeah, it looks bad. They're everywhere. Um, you know, I mean, look, there's a, there's a ton of them. But I'm not, I'm not so worried that I'll never, ever get rid of them. And, I, and I'll tell you which one of those methods works best and what some of the drawbacks are. So, so stay tuned. Um, like this video. Make some comments if you have questions that you want me to particularly address in the coming up videos. Um, and subscribe so you'll be notified when the ones do pop up because it'll be it'll be pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. So I took an Aptasia and I put him in one of my deep slides for the microscope because I wanted to to look at him. Um, at first, I took a um, macro lens, but that wasn't enough, so I had to actually stick him under the microscope. So what we're looking at here is one of the tentacles. And that's one of the things I like about the deep microscope. Uh, slide is that it leaves the specimen alive so that we can actually look at it moving and so that's one of the tentacles doing its thing and 
um, a little more magnification and you can kind of begin to see some structure uh, going on there and it's, um, it's it's just fascinating to me to see these kind of things and we don't really I don't really understand sometimes how how much anemone and those kind of things move around you know they're constantly searching for food or whatever and this guy's fully alive you know he's I could put him back in the tank and he would be just fine so a little more magnification we can begin to see the structure you can see the breakdown now where you can actually see the zoas and thella inside of him um, they are photosynthetic these little anemone now, they don't have to be they can live off of food too so you'll sometimes find them in completely dark places but they prefer the light they do much better and they'll collect that zoas and thella now it's interesting you see he's puffing up and he's in, in putting water into his body look at that that's pretty cool um, and he was agitated of course because I took him out and put him in the slide but now he's getting more comfortable and uh, expanding back to to normal and that allows you to see the zoosanthella a lot more I think that's pretty fascinating you can see the each individual little algae and that's where just like your corals that's where he gets his uh, energy from the the vast majority of it and you can kind of begin to see on the outside of the well I've gone out of focus now it's hard with a deep slide to get what you want in focus just in case you're wondering because you're talking about focusing on a very very slight three-dimensional area so sometimes I get kind of messed up so let's see if we can go a little bit uh, more let's see what that does for us so what I'm thinking actually at this point is that I'm gonna have to take a, a specimen to get what I really want to see and I'm guessing you're probably thinking the same thing I am that the thing you really want to see is the nematocyst and that's going to be the stinging cells they're much smaller than the single cell algae so you can see tons of that zoosanthella and you can kind of see a little bit of the fuzz of the nematocysts but nematocysts they don't quite look like what we expect them to so it'll be interesting but I'll have to what I'll have to do is take a, um, a slide preparation meaning I'll have to take a little razor blade slice off a little bit and put them on a flat slide by doing that it gets more light through and it also allows me to focus perfectly and it'll allow me to use the larger lens which I, I can't do so I will do that just a sec okay there it is that's a little bit of tentacle on a uh, flat slide which will allow me to put it in the uh, microscope and get the uh, the really nice um, high power view there we go so it's interesting because even though this is sliced off he's still moving right he's still got some life in him so what you're seeing there the little green ones are the zoosanthella and those long ones are the nematocysts and so inside of those if I had one more level of zoom you could see their them coiled up but they they kind of explode out the end um, of that and so they're they're all over you know there's there's tons of them um, and they pretty much, I, I went online and I looked at different ones. And it seems that most anemone have nematocysts that look pretty much like what you're seeing there. So I think that's kind of fascinating. And they just seem to be intermixed um, in the system. Uh, I always kind of would imagine that they would be fixed to the skin. But they don't seem to be. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. We'll uh, hang out and see how we kill this thing that we have looked at because looking at it in the microscope that's not going to kill anything one at a time so anyway we do want them dead and you know living creatures sure pests living creatures keep that in mind as we kill them and don't feel too awfully bad see you guys next time thanks for watching